Good morning, good morning, good morning, real estate. That's right. We got the new <laughs> name. Good morning, real estate. If you couldn't guess who I was, I was Uncle Bernie there for a second. Um, we'd like to welcome you to <laughs> Good Morning Real Estate. Uh, could well, wait, wait, wait. I got to get my fake hair weave together. Hold on. Let me give you. Huh, yes. So don't think I'm not tossing my Michelle weave today, baby, because I'm bringing you Michelle monochromatic pumpkin. What's up today? <laughs> So uh, I'm Jeremiah J. Man Monero. Welcome to Good Morning Real Estate. To my right, we have none other than the Marky Lemons Round Real Estate Keynote Speaker, international best-selling author, and Michelle Obama impersonator. Boom! Catch the weave. <laughs> and I get to listen to all of this commentary. I am the Carrie Little of Smart Girl Media dot com where i am the author of the new real estate agents journal and i am excited to be here with bernie sanders and the michelle obama <laughs> well welcome back everybody uh today we're gonna be talking about three specific topics uh carrie's gonna start us off first and then i'll go second and then mark you go Go third, but our first topic is going to be the eviction moratorium being extended. What that means to you, some action items, and what you could do with your real estate business. Our second topic is is Zillow your competition? Okay, and then the third one, Marky's hitting us. Oh, almost hit me in the head. Uh, is your first offer the best it can be? So then we hit him. So here we go. Now I know all of you. Wait, hold on. We got like, Uncle Bernie. What? Oh, oh, hey, hey. We got Uncle Bernie in the house. He's just chilling on the building over there. Uncle Bernie, we're you trying know, to run he, a show. He wanted to check us out. Yeah. Which he just wanted. To, he wanted to see what was happening. <laughs> all right. Well, Carrie, hit us off with that that uh, moratorium being extended. Okay. So first of all, um, like many of us myself and Marky you knows Sarah Ware, we we sit in the news. Like this is this is our what we watch every day. That's why if you ever get invited to Marky Lemon's house, Sarah and I are not allowed to talk because when they used to watch the show Power, we could just stare because we had no clue what was going on because Sarah and I are in the news. So I say that because many of you um you're out selling real estate because that's what you should be doing you probably missed that the new administration signed um, to extend the uh, eviction moratorium and the foreclosure moratorium. Now, this doesn't mean you should not check the, your own state rules and laws, but as of today, it was extended through March 31st. So I have a few things I wanna say. Number one, we still think you should be learning about short sales and foreclosures Mm -hmm. But while you're learning, you have to remember that you might not be listing these pre foreclosures and short sales right away. However, don't forget if a property is vacant, if a property is vacant, the bank will move forward with the foreclosure. So if you're someone that's like, you know what, I really want to get into the swing of things. I really want to learn more about this. You might still be able to list a pre foreclosure and get it sold for the homeowner. Um, but now's the time to learn. The other thing you might want to do is you might want to get on the phone. You might want to call your network. 
You might want to update them on everything that's happening. You might even create a post and say, reach out to me so I can give you the full details. Maybe create a link in your Linktree bio I to like provide it. the information to your, you like that? Yeah. Yeah. So um, the, the truth is, is this is a great way to connect. It's a great way to make updates. It's a great way to be found. And if you're a blogger, you could blog about it, give the information about your state. You could give the national update. And then you could be the person, the go-to person, if someone, here's what we know. We know that many of our people in our network may have um, temporarily lost their job in a furlough, right? Or people have lost their job and they're trying to still figure out how to figure it out. And they haven't been hired yet. So because the um, moratorium was extended, we know they're not moving out. The other thing you need to remember, and Marky, Marky teaches this, but the other thing you need to know is you should, everyone should go to Fannie or Freddie and look up the short sale rules so you can be the source of the source because we're not attorneys. We can't um, tell them what to do, but we can explain to them what to do when you find the source. Knowing this, people can be prepared to sell their houses and maybe someone might end up in um, listing their house as a pre foreclosure, but they're not underwater. So it's not a true sh uh, short sale. So my takeaways are number one, call your network. Number two, go look up the rule. So you're educated. And number three, look up in your state and then also uh, make sure that you're planning for uh, what might come maybe in um, fourth quarter of 2021 and then the first quarter of 2022. Yeah, and and I think as as realtors, Mark, I will hit you up next. As, as realtors, we're always struggling with with what resources can we provide a value to our clients. And this is such a and I, I posted it in the comments the entire article from from NAR .realtor, uh, that also has the resources that are available for landlords. So if you have clients that you've sold investment properties to, they can apply for money for their tenants to get caught up. Like think of the value you're providing there. You call your investment. Hey, or you just do a post or you do a video and say, hey, I don't know if you knew this, but you can save your property, your tenant who's struggling, who's not paying you rent. You help them in that scenario. You have a tenant for life if they don't buy a house from you. Go ahead, Mark. I just wanted Carrie to add the other night, she actually mentioned one of the ways to penetrate a new community, especially if it's one of those communities that only tend to do business with realtors in that community. Carrie, do you want to share that one tip for penetrating that neighborhood across the street, under the bridge, over the river, you know? And through the woods. Um, <laughs> through the woods. <laughs> okay, yeah, I remember in 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 your um in 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 the exclusive Marky Lemon six figures in twelve. So here you go. So a lot of times as real estate agents, we want to tap into a luxury market or a market where it's hard to break in. What we know in a lot of our communities and um the higher end communities, real everybody knows everyone. And so the people that live in that community are typically going to hire someone that lives in that community. But right. if you want to break in, go and look for all of the properties that are in pre foreclosure, because sometimes uh, those people don't want to list with the people they know because they don't want all their business in the street. Now, we know we have a fiduciary literally. responsibility, yeah, but they don't want everyone to know. So if you want to tap into a new market, that would be the way to do it. So go look in Remind or Realist. And make sure you're tapping into those areas and, and be human. Don't just, this is right. where we make mistakes. Be human when you send that letter. And it might be a handwritten note. Hey, I'm here to help. No obligation. I'd love to talk to you about what your options might be if you ever end up in a pre-foreclosure scenario. So thanks, Marky. Good tip. Good tip. Hit it. Hit the horn. I think we need the horn on that one. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Uh, we so, have to give a shout out to our our behind the scenes. Yeah, shout out to Amy Reeves. She's our producer extraordinaire today. Uh, if you don't know what it takes to put something like this on, there's a lot of moving parts, bells and whistles, and for us to be talking, it's almost impossible to be clicking on other stuff and maintaining eye contact with you, uh, the virtual audience. So what what are we talking about next? We're talking about is Zillow. Your competition? What? What? I, and, and, you know, because we always talk about, like, what are the trending topics that we, that we see out there in the market? Because we're in so many different groups and people are talking about stuff. 
And again and again in the last few months, I've, I've been seeing Zillow is a broker. They're a member of our MLS. What are we going to do? The sky is falling. I, you know, don't even get me started because I, you know, we we not I'm the one that takes the call. <laughs> Have we right. not been syndicating for like 15 to 20 years? Like, right, right. And, and we don't have billions of dollars. And so they're not our, go on, J-Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it, in the nature of your business, they're not our competition, right? If you run a referral-based business, you stay in touch with your sphere of influence, you do what you do. There's just another broker in your market. Like, I wouldn't even worry about it. Just keep your mind on your, if you're somebody who is heavily, relying on Zillow for your lead, your, your, your lead supply, if you will, then you may need to transition a bit and maybe go to Red X or do something else, do something a little different, but they're not your competition, right? One thing that they can never have over you is your knowledge and expertise of the market, right? They're a national tech, technology company, now a national broker at some point everywhere in the United States. They will never know what it's like to live in that neighborhood or what okay. it's like to, you know, what are the amenities that are offered because they don't have feet on the ground. They don't have years of experience like you do. Go ahead, Marky. You want to say? Uh, 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 uh. I'm just listening to you, J-Man. I'm just listening to you. <laughs> well, no, and, and here's a, I would say agents need to go actually read the terms of what, what a Zestimate really means. They need to go look at the foreclosures. Agents need to know that when their clients call them and say, hey, I see this pre-foreclosure on Zillow, that could just be they're in the default phase. And it could be that it's a, a property where someone um, missed a payment. And so now they're excited. They're ready to knock on doors. And, you know, right now, you I don't think you want to knock in on anybody's door, especially with what's happening in our ne neck Wait, of the woods. Right, Mark? I, oh, especially not in my neck of the woods. But what this is, uh, what I'm noticing, people crave one-on-one -on -one communication right now because they aren't getting it. And now is the time to do something different, something that a Zillow could not do. First of all, Zillow does not have feet on the ground creating video content every single day. Zillow is not joining your local chamber of commerce. Zillow is not showing up at the CAPS meeting. Zillow is not attending virtual church on Sunday. All of these are different ways that you can communicate in real time with the community in which you live in, in the community in which you want to dominate. I need you guys to show up virtually. Let me say it like this. Do you want to hire someone that has not, um, that gets updates? Uh, their data is about six months old because they don't get the, the direct feed from the multiple listing service. Or do you want to hire someone that actually has access to what closed yesterday? Hmm. Ponder that thought. Hmm. Well, that's the thing. Don't worry about it, folks. If you if you make your business about your clients and you focus on relationships and not transactions, it doesn't matter who moves in and who's the big broker and who has all the leads. I don't care. Say it with me. I don't care. Right? As long as you have relationships with your clients and say, this is what you need to do, though, in the beginning. When you meet with your buyer or seller, this is a conversation that I always have, but it, it's worth discussing. I, I tell them, what is his estimate, right? You explain that. Google that right now. It'll tell you. It's not Zpraisal. It's not <laughs> the market value, right? It's a, it's a rough estimate of what the home is worth. But then I also talk about pre-foreclosures and what those are. I say a pre-foreclosure is nothing more than somebody who's, who's behind in their mortgage and a Liz Pendence has been filed in that county. So the bank intends to foreclose. In New York State where I am, that could take five years. That may never ever be a listing, but what they what they do is they appeal to the larceny in people's souls, right? Everybody wants a deal. And so I tell my clients, hey, if you see a, a, a pre-foreclosure, let me know. It doesn't mean that it's it's necessarily gonna be a listing, but I can look it up using RPR. I can look up, look it up. I can tell you when the Liz Pendants was filed, who the attorney was that filed it. Um, but still, it's just a, a tech company trying to get you to click through and capture your information. So if you don't have that conversation, that's where you might lose the client. You know, what, what's a pre-foreclosure in a market uh, with no or little inventory? You know what, hey, man? I'm sorry. Yeah. What happens, um, one third of all listings, I would always get from one little strategy. 
Here in Cook County, our taxes are paid one year in arrears and homeowners can get a homeowner's exemption. But one third of those homeowners never file for their homeowner's exemption. So when I would show up at the home, I would always have a printout of their tax records. And if I could go back and get them that exemption, which you can go back up to three years, I was coming in the door giving them money. They were going to list with me, not one person, did I get a refund? Did they not list with me? So we have to come back, look at that local information. What's gonna be your unique selling proposition and how do you differentiate yourself from all the other realtors out here? And often it's as simple as a little research. Just a, just a letter, just a little research. My tip was gonna be that, so it, that we're out here and we're trying to get people to list their pre-foreclosures because we think we're helping others maybe find a deal. But if you really do go back and look at the data, even the pre-foreclosure market or the short sale market or the REO, the real estate owned, bank owned market, they're selling really close to a traditional price. So right. don't try to think you're going to go out and put all your eggs in one basket overnight. And five years, yeah, Jay, man, it took me three years to sell. Um, the longest for me was three and a half years with a short sale. Although it's a whole lot faster now. Oh, well, what I mean in New York State, we're a judicial state. It, it, the average foreclosure process takes up to five years to actually foreclose. Yeah. And even, even when the people are gone, we had two on my street. And I have a very active neighborhood. They're like, we have people that want to buy this property today. And it still took two two and a half years to, to get it through the process with a lot of leverage, if you know what I'm saying, like important people leaning on whoever they can. And it still took still took two and a half years. Yeah, we've had that. And we've I had one in my neighborhood took about six. And listen, it takes time. So I get it. So once you're yeah. in the short sale process, it, it's a little different. Got it. Yeah. So let's um, I, I guess we want to hit him with I'm going to hit him with one little tip or, or tech tip or app. Uh, that we, we were talking about this yesterday. There's a, a great service called moveguru.com, M-O-O-V, and I'll, I'll put this in the comments, moveguru.com. What they are is a, a moving concierge. So it's somebody that you can re refer your clients to. Give that white glove service, have them contact the utilities, the moving company, all the things that they have to do, don't know how to do, and maybe you provide them the numbers, maybe you don't. But it's, it's just another value add to say, hey, Right in a market where things are selling quickly, you have to start piling up your value and saying, this is what I do, 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 this is what I do. It's not just put a sign in the yard and take a picture, right? I mean, we do so much more and we provide so much value to our clients. So moveguru.com. Um, oh yeah, there it is. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, <laughs> well, popped it in there. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what? When we were talking about that added benefit, I was uh, telling you about a gentleman here in Chicago. His name is Lamont Ellaby. He owns an ADT. And very seldom does he ever say he owns an ADT, but he has become champagne closings where he shows up at the closing with champagne, with uh, vanity glasses, everything. But in order to get a champagne closing, you must allow him to attend your final walkthrough. And at that time, he discusses the ADT, which to me is really unique. So how are you going to give people an experience? That's it, an experience. Absolutely. Well, Marky, what, what, what are you going to talk about? Oh, let me think about this. Oh, let me flip my hat up and get oh, my hair wings right. Hat, girl. Because I need y'all, look. I need y'all to see all of this when I go to explain this. <laughs> Let me explain it. I got some explaining to do. Go ahead. Because y'all wearing me out, dear buyer agents. All right. Last time I checked, we are in a seller's market. That means that if you represent buyers, your first offer needs to be your best offer. And I am seeing bootleg offers. Or better yet, you are just running around in circles, chasing your tail because you did not have a buyer's consultation. And I believe that all of us have had something to do with ABR. I know that J-Man and I are both uh, ABR instructors. So your first offer should be your best offer. Carrie and did. what I mean by that is, oh, Carrie, you an ABR instructor? Wait, yeah, I just oh, have never taught it. 
Because, you know, that was the day I went to class when Mark almost got into a little scuffle in Florida. That's right. Okay, anyway. I got oh, it. I remember that day. So guess what? We're all ABR instructors, okay? <laughs> and when I think about being an ABR instructor, first of all, that class changed my life. It increased my income and my sustainability here in the world of real estate. But this is what I mean. One, these lowball offers do not work in a seller's market. You want to reduce the amount of closing costs that you ask for. You want to reduce the amount of contingencies. So a prime example, and I explained this the other day on Facebook, I have over $400,000 equity in my current home. However, within 12 months of owning my home, my husband went back and did a rate and term refinance at 62% loan to value. We owed about $232,000. And at the time, the house was worth $425,000 within 12 months. People told me my offer was crazy because the property came to the market at $149,000. We offered $200,000. But, and, and guess what? We were on vacation while bidding on this house. And my husband was having a heart attack. Are you sure we gonna get the house? Marky, was your offer good enough? Like now I'm being, a, uh, you know, I'm offended, right? right? But let me tell you what we did. In its as is condition, I knew that it was worth $200,000. I knew that most of my competitors would get the same type of loan I was getting, a 203K, either streamline or 4 k That allows them to ask for up to six points to closing costs. I never asked for closing costs. In order for their offer to outperform my offer, they would have needed to add an additional $12,000. So instead of the two hundred dollars I offered, they would need to offer $212,000. Yeah, I'm making these about, you know, round numbers. Yeah. The next thing, I had the right to have a home inspection. I didn't have a home inspection because in my state, we utilize attorneys to close real estate deals. I know that my attorney can get me out of anything. So I didn't need to have a home inspection contingency when I had an attorney review contingency. So you have to sit down and think about everyone who is your competition, mm -hmm. who's also making an offer on that property because your offer needs to outperform theirs. Your first offer needs to be your best offer and stop thinking that you are entitled to a listing agent or a seller, and it's not even the listing agent, the seller coming back and asking you for highest and best. That right. is written absolutely nowhere. nowhere. Stop yeah. selling that garbage. Say it again. Nowhere. Say it nowhere again, girl. Right. It's not licensed law. It's not the Realtors Code of Ethics. They do not have to ask you for highest and best. So when you leave up out of here today, I just need you to come on. I wish we could have a beat. Make your first offer your best offer. Your first offer, your oh, best offer. Jay Man's making a song. What, 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 he gonna have me a beat before it's over. Parody. Look, yeah. and my Michelle, <laughs> in true Michelle Obama fashion, let me swoop my hair weave and flip my hat. Flip it. Can I add to this? <laughs> here, let me tell you, this is what agents don't get because I'm going back to the data. In your buyer consultation, you need to show your clients what houses are selling for. Then number two, you really need to talk to your loan officers to get people fully underwritten, like fully underwritten. So now you have power. So who cares about highest and best because you are not on your best because you can close in 20 days because you it's almost like having cash because all you need is an appraisal and a uh, house you need a house and an appraisal and you can close so marky's right we bought our house um as is and i'll tell you when we moved in the water was coming in through the side of the house most of y'all would freak out we the hot water tank wasn't working mark went to every lowe's home depot menards probably for a week and looked for everything dented because he wasn't going to pay full price so marky is absolutely right how bad do you want the house you have a dented <laughs> hot water tank. Now I'm going to have to yes. check your hot water pressure. You got a dented hot water tank. <laughs> we can't listen. believe it. I we got a dented refrigerated too. You, listen, call Mark. Yeah. It's must a stress for me. Well, I ain't look, getting nothing new. No new that's, car. That's because, um, you know, Mark and I were talking about, you know, in that, that multiple offer situation or in the seller's market, that you also have to be careful. You're doing escalation clauses where you're doing a cap on a number, right? 
let's say, oh, I'm going to go in and that same $200,000 house, we're going to do 5000 over at the highest and best or the highest bona fide offers, how we would write it here, uh, with a cap of two fifty. Now, a savvy seller's agent is going to come over and go, yeah, we're going to be countering your offer for two fifty. Go, well, we need to see the other offers if you want to perform on an escalation clause. No, no, no. Let me say that again. We're going to counter your offer for 250 Okay. That's when you drop the house keys and you walk away because you're not exercising the clause. The buyer's agent is actually violating their fiduciary duty of confidentiality. And I hope you asked your buyer if that was okay because you basically said to me, hey, we want to buy this and we'll pay up to 250 Okay, cool. You're going to pay 250 right? <laughs> and what people don't understand when we are going, when we counter an offer, we actually rejected the offer. So it's really, even though we don't say that, right? We say counter, right. there is a series of events. What you presented is rejected. And right. as a result of it being rejected, this is what I am telling you my offer is now. I love it. Love it. Get it, get it. Swipes my head. Oh, wait, you know, for, for you guys who are tuning in for the first time this month, first of all, it's going to be the last Wednesday of every single month until the conference in November. So save the date. Um, the good morning real estate dot live. <laughs> I almost said it. Good morning real estate dot live is the URL that you can go to that will automatically forward to the event. But let's let's put the link to the post show zoom networking we have that um i had it in the beginning it's it's bitly bit.ly slash gmre networking but i can i can and here's the thing when they come over to the networking uh, party we've actually gone and done some research we went back and pulled the information from brian buffini where he told us where people were moving to today we are facilitating referrals to the hottest areas so come on over so that you can start building your referral business we will also provide you with a referral form if you've never had one and a referral status follow-up we ready for the after party boo let's go make it rain money baby where the money resides let's go get it before that become trademark ain't use that either ooh, 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 where the money resides <laughs> well, uh, we're gonna hit you with some outgoing music marky's got her new song she's gonna sing uh, uh, is it your highest and best offer marky's coming through and you know that she got super <laughs> so we just posted the the bitly link in the comments make sure you come in we're gonna get started right around 9.45, 8.45 Central Time. We're not gonna be coaching you in the Zoom. We're gonna help you be a networking powerhouse with contact throughout the entire universe. All right, folks. Oh, oh. We wanna thank you for tuning in. This is Jeremiah's J. Manero with Good Morning Real Estate with my two co-anchors. Marky Lemons Rao and Carrie Jo Little. I was gonna give you the opportunity to, uh, but thanks um, for tuning in. My Michelle old phase over here. Oh, Michelle Obama's leaving the building. Hair oh, weaving off. Wait, let's see. Tape her coat on so I could could have been a Kamala and got my sneakers. <laughs> let's see if, is Bernie still here? Bernie, where you at? Bernie. 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 Bring your butt on out here. Oh, there yeah, he, he is. What he is? Shout out hey, to Bernie. Bernie. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm going to need to take a photo. Uh, <laughs> make sure you screenshot that. Hashtag, you know, if you're going to be posting <laughs> on Instagram, hashtag GMRE, hashtag Good Morning Real Estate. But we'll see you over in the after party uh, in roughly 11 minutes. Uh, Link should have posted. I just... Post it in the comments. I'll post it again in the comments, but this is Jeremiah's J. Man Mineral. Thanks for tuning in to Good Morning Real Estate. Make it a great day, and we'll see you next month.